Every brother Let's call it in the crossfire Let's call it in the crossfire Without mercy all right, all right, ladies, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to season nine. It's a season of change, of excitement. Let's get started with Katarina Runes. We figure we'd update this. Uh, it's been obviously some time, and uh, what better time than at the start of season nine uh, to talk about Katarina's runes? Um, last time we talked about uh, Dark Harvest. I really don't think it's an option anymore on Katarina. I just want to get some few things out of the way before I dive into this. Dog Harvest, I think, is no longer an option on Katarina. It used to be good uh, pre-nerf, but uh, I don't go for it anymore. Ravenous Hunter has been nerfed as well, so I don't go for that. And a Genius Hunter is better for Katarina, and I'll explain why as we go through this. So let's begin, right? Katarina's Runes. Um, this is the standard uh, Katarina Runes that I would go for. Pretty much almost every game. So we have Electrocute, which is really good for early trading, skirmishing, and it helps later on in the game as well. But mainly it's for the trading that you do in lane. And it's really, really good. It also helps you burst uh, AD carries and all that uh, later on in the game. It's probably the most effective uh, keystone to go for on Katamina. Dog Harvest, I really think you should go for it if you're smurfing, probably. Like if you're a diamond smurf and you're playing in silver, bronze, whatever... I guess you can go Dark Harvest because people make a lot of mistakes and you can really make this work. Um, but still, I even then, I'd probably just go Electrocute. Um, just because it's the ideal choice on Katarina. Uh, the rest, I won't go too deep. Like, Sudden Impact, I, I won't go too deep on those. But the reason we go Sudden Impact is obviously because Shampo is a blink. And it increases your lethality. Eyeball over Ghost Poro and Zombie Ward for sure. For me, anyway, you can go for Ghost Poro if you want. Um... You gain adaptive damage if you put a Ghost Boro in the enemy jungle or whatever in their territory. But with Eyeball Collection, it just kind of sticks with you the whole time. You don't have to do anything. And if they spot the Ghost Boro, that adaptive damage is gone. Um, I just go Eyeball. Honestly, just go Eyeball. Uh, you can go Ghost Boro if you want. Ingenious Hunter. Now, here's why we go Ingenious Hunter. is because Gunblade active and Zonia active are essential essential things to have on someone like Katarina. I think it's better than Ravenous Hunter. Even though, yes, you go Gunblade and you heal and all that great stuff. It's fantastic, right? It's great to have. But I think Ingenious Hunter is better because you can use Gunblade more often and you can use Zonia more often. And those are great tools for Katarina to dominate the arena. All right, so I'll probably go Ingenious Hunter. If I were you. Now secondary, you might think there are different options other than precision. There used to be like that before, um, but really, I'll just explain why the others, uh, the other options are not good on Katarina, and one of them being resolve. So you can't go bomb plate second wind anymore together because that used to be good against Cassidon. Um, he would just poke you, and then you just heal from second wind and Doran shield. Or if you start long sword, you play aggressive. And just go second win and bone plate. But you can't go for those two anymore uh, together. So there's no point, right? There's no point in going resolve anymore on Katarina. I tried revitalize. It's honestly dog shit. Don't go revitalize, man. Honestly, like you might think it's good because, oh, you have gun blade and you heal. But it's honestly so bad. It's really not that effective. It's good on someone like Akali because Akali can max Q and get, you know, a lot of healing uh, on five points in Q because that's what Akali does. Five points in Q gives her a lot of healing and revitalize helps with that but yeah this is not for katarina um this 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 resolve whole thing with resolve no good don't ever go for this on katarina even if it's a hard matchup used to be good not anymore don't do it sorcery absolute focus has been nerfed i probably won't go for sorcery anymore um celerity has been buffed but i don't care honestly i prefer triumph and precision way more and kudura honestly they, they just seem to be better options um could go for Scorch if you want, but honestly, this isn't the way to go. You could go Nullifying Orb and Gathering Storm or Scorch, but again, like, I'm not a fan of this whole thing. Uh, you could go Nullifying Orb if it's like a Kassadin if you want. I guess Kassadin, I still go Precision and just go Balls Mode. Like, this is gonna be, like, if you're against a heavy AP matchup and you're really worried, but I just go Balls Mode anyway and I just play Aggressive. Uh, but yeah, you could go Nullifying Orb, Scorch, or Nullifying Orb, Gathering Storm. If you really feel like you want that magic shield against LeBlanc, Annie, whatever it is, right? This, I never go for anymore. Uh, Inspiration, hate it. Okay, look, <clears throat> here's the thing, right? 
yes, you get free boots. It, it's great, right? You have you get free boots. But do I want free boots or do I want Triumph? Do I want this or do I want Kudura? You know, I, I think like that. Triumph is just such a good option that you'd be missing out on that. And I really think, yeah, you can do this. Stopwatch or boots and then like Time Warp Tonic. Because, you know, if you consume a potion, you, you know, you grant 50% of its health or mana restoration immediately. Yeah, sure, that's great. Not a fan. You can go for the CDR, yes. But again, I don't care about this too much. I'm just giving you a, a, a whole perspective of why I think the other secondary ones don't work on Katarina. And why I think Precision is the best. Just so you guys can understand my perspective and what I think is best for Katarina. And why the other options are not good. So Precision is the best option. Because you have two slots, right? You have Triumph and Kodera. Or Triumph and uh, legend tenacity now what you might be thinking why the hell would you ever go legend tenacity but in some matchups where they go sejuani and heavy 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 crowd control you you sometimes have to get that tenacity and buy merc treads some games you've been in those games 100 percent. if you're katarina main you've been in games where every fucking guy has like insane massive crowd control and you're dicked right it's it's really really hard to play against that, like Sejuani, um, and a whole bunch of other CCs, like uh, top lane Malphite, they're so tanky, you're gonna take a lot of crowd control, sometimes it's almost unavoidable, um, even if you try to avoid crowd control the best you can, sometimes you will get CC'd, but yeah, I would recommend uh, Triumph all the time, just go Triumph, Legend Tenacity, or Triumph, and Kudura, those are your best options, and I really think your default options are Triumph and Kudura. So you should definitely go for Triumph Kudura, in my opinion. By the way, I'm sorry if I say Kudura uh, wrong. Some people in my chat before, they say, you say Coupe de Grace or uh, Kudura. Like, I don't know, dude. I'm not even going to bother. Okay, I'm sorry. Look, I'm just going to say Kudura, all right? I'm sorry if I pronounce the whole thing wrong. I know a lot of people give me shit for that. But anyway, uh, Triumph Kudura is the way to go for me. Uh, next, Adaptive Force, Adaptive Force. You go double adaptive force and you either go armor or amar health i don't go for this anymore i mean i never really went for it um i tr tested it when it was like first released and i really didn't like it that much compared to armor and amar and i really think you should go for either this or that depending on the matchup again obviously against yasuo zed etc etc you go armor against ap champions you're gonna go magic resistance it's just that simple right you definitely want the nine plus nine adaptive force on both of these because you're gonna most of the time as katarina you're gonna be going for early skirmishes and early trades and you're going for that level two level three level six that's your spikes in the laning phase and you want to take advantage of that by the way fanatic and team vitality are now playing but it doesn't matter um yeah, LEC started. They call it LEC now instead of LCS, whatever. Um, but yeah, uh, this is the way to go, I really think, because Katarina is a very early game skirmisher trader. So it's good to have the Adaptive Force to help you win that level 2 trade that you're going to go for. Just before I, I go further, I this is very important. When you hit level 2, it's the second minion wave. The first melee minion of the second wave, you hit level 2. That's when you know you're going to hit level 2 and you can immediately level up E and go in. Alright, so that's something to keep in mind in like most some matchups where you hit level 2 first. Uh, and if you hit level 3, it's the third wave. Three melee minions on the third wave will get you level 3. Obviously, you'd have to clear all the minions from 1 and 2. Minion wave 1, minion wave 2, you have to clear all the minions. If there are a few straggler range minions they didn't kill, you're not going to hit level 3. I just want to say this now because it will help you win early trades. So, it's important to keep that in mind. Level 2, level 3, and level 6, these are your spikes. And you should try to make, you know, make, a, uh, use, make use of that. Put advantage, put pressure um, in the lane. Right, so we pretty much talked about runes. Hopefully, um, we've said it, uh, explained it as best as we could. Now we're going to be talking about items, which is uh, really... I haven't changed much about this. If you see my old guide, it's going to be pretty much the same same stuff. But um, we'll just say it now because it's patch 9.2 and there's a lot of new players and they're really wondering. So we're still going to be talking about this again. Um, and I'll be pretty linear about this. Uh, long sword start is the best start for Katarina because you're an early trader and you make use of your level two and level three and uh, your early skirmishes. 
So having long sword really helps because Shumpa refund early game is low. And you're going to be doing a lot of auto attacking. Like, here's the thing. You're going to E, auto attack, W. And you're going to auto attack again. Spin damage will land now. Auto attack. And then you wait for your Shumpo a little bit, uh, the refund to go a bit lower. And then you auto attack Q, auto attack, uh, you E, auto attack, grab dagger, auto attack. You see, like, there's a lot of auto attacking going on. I'm sorry, that was a bit too fast for me to explain. Um, basically, what I'm trying to say is early on, if you know your combos with Katarina, you're going to be auto attacking quite often and your spin damage still does AD damage. So it's good to make use of that and trade early. Dark Seal is good if you're going to be playing uh, safe and making use of the health pots because you get 25% increased healing from potions. So this is good if you're trying to sustain the lane. And it's you can still play aggressive with this uh, to some extent, but it's better to go longsword if you're really looking to play aggressive in lane. Um, like I guess Emmerdinger, if you go longsword, you're not really going to make use of that as much because most of the time your lane's going to be shoved in at your turret and you're not going to be making use of longsword. So sometimes it's better to start Dark Seal or Doran Shield against Hammerdinger, preferably Doran Shield uh, because of the health regen and health pot. It will help you survive the lane a bit longer against someone like Hammerdinger. So yeah, Doran Shield, I'll just say, say right now the starting items real quick explanation. Door shield against heavy poke and you feel like you're going to get pressured on the turret for the most time. For the most of the laning phase. Dark seal if you're looking to sustain the lane and play aggressive here and there. But you're not looking to all in and kill as often. But you're still going to do it. But you're trying to sustain. Right? Longsword is the best way to all in early game and get early kills. So really I recommend longsword 3 health pots when you're playing Katamina. Boot start, you never do it. Um, I never do it. You can do it if you want to dodge Zerath skill shots, I guess, or you know some skill shots in lane. But honestly, I'd rather just go the long sword and play aggressive against the Zerath. You know, like he's gonna shove lane, but you, even if it's a main champion who's just pushing in wave and using abilities, when he uses abilities, he's vulnerable. So you can all in him after he uses abilities and make use of the long sword and do a lot of damage. So long sword start is good. Even if it's against someone who pokes a lot or pushes wave a lot or mages that just shove lane all the time. Yeah, it's still good to go for longsword against those champions. Obviously three health pots. Um, I go farsight alteration if I'm losing the game. And I go sweeper if it's just like... I always get sweeper like later on in the game. If I'm looking to enter the enemy jungle quite often and make use of that. But yeah, Farsight Orb is also good of your head because you can deep ward the enemy jungle to like to make sure that your team doesn't get caught, which is good. It's good to have. Uh, Control Ward, I pretty much buy it every single time I can buy it when I have gold. And uh, you should look at my mid lane warding guide that I have uh, in my LOL Tutorials Guide and Tips playlist if you really want to know the best spots for Control Wards um, when you're playing mid lane. So I actually have a full video on that. You can see it if you want. I'll put it in the description just for you guys. If you're really curious. Uh, we buy refillable on our second or first back. If we have enough gold by the way. So you don't want to keep buying health pots. Eventually you're going to buy refillable. Obviously start uh, warding totem. Right. Uh, core items. Here's how I buy gunblade. Uh, obviously we start longsword right. So I buy another longsword and revolver. If we can right. And then I finish the whole gunblade eventually. Uh, sometimes. If it's uh, Elise Jungle and the Blank Mid or something like that, like CC, uh, I have to worry about that kind of thing. Like, let's say it's uh, Ahari Charm plus Elise Cocoon. I actually go double Longsword, Revolver, and then Merc Treads because Merc Treads will help me survive the early ganks and the early uh, crowd control that you receive. And it's actually not bad to buy Merc Treads uh, like after double Longsword, Revolver. You can do that. Um, if you're snowballing really hard, just instantly go for. A gun blade and buy your boots later you're gonna buy one of these obviously sork shoes if you want the flat pen if you're looking to play aggressive if you're looking to go all in and they don't have that much crowd control you don't need the tenacity but tenacity is so good even if you're ahead because even if they crowd control you and you're ahead they can't kill you fast um, because you're gonna break out of that cc relatively fast because of the tenacity and then you can play aggressive ninja tabby if it's uh, double jungle, uh, sorry, if it's uh, double AD, 
So you have Shaco, Jungle, and Yasuo mid. This can work. Uh, this can potentially work. Um, plus, you have armor runes. If you go armor seals, I call it armor seals. I'm sorry. I know it's not called armor seals or whatever you call armor defense stat, whatever you want to call it. I call it armor seals because it's the classic League of Legends way. So I'm going to say armor seals. Uh, you can go tabby if you wish. Um, Oblivion Orb is really good if you're snowballing. The AP on it sucks. It's not amazing. But you buy it because of the magic pen. Uh, you want that 15 magic pen if you're looking a hard snowball. So if you're really winning lane and you're doing so well, just go Gunblade, one of these boots, and then Oblivion Orb. I don't recommend you buy Morello. A lot of people would say, just finish the item, just finish Oblivion. I really don't think so. I think it's better and more effective if you just buy Oblivion Orb and keep it. Keep it and buy something else. Either Vo either, either uh, Zonia, Void, or Rabadon. You're going to select one of these options. Rabadon is really risky. Because if you win early snowball, you're looking to really win. If you throw, Rabdon becomes useless. Well, it doesn't become useless. It just... They might stack MR and then you don't have enough money for Void Staff. And you're like, oh shit, well, I probably should have bought Zanya and Void. So, Rabadon can be risky. Unless you're 100% confident you're going to win. So, we're talking about after Oblivion Orb purchase, right? So, you're going to buy... These are your items after you buy, buy Oblivion Orb, right? So, now you have Gunblade. A tier 2 boots, Oblivion Orb. Now you're going to select... These will always be your items, okay? These next items, will, there will always be your items. Zonia, Void, Rabadon. You will have these items every game. Every game is just the build order will be different. You're going to buy different items at different times based on the situation, based on what you think would be better in the current situation. If they stack MR early, uh, Vayne has QSS, uh, your, their mid laner has a Hex Drink or Merc Treads, you want to get Void like as soon as you can, otherwise you're not going to do that much damage. One thing I will say, Void plus Rabadon together is really good uh, to kill people with MR. So if you just have Gunblade, Tier 2 Boots, Oblivion Orb, and Void Staff, yeah, you'll do damage to people with MR. But if you have Rabadon as well as the Void, it's going to do a lot of magic penetration damage. So it's good to have both, basically. It's really good to have both. So try to get them as fast as you can. Zonia is almost... Zonia is almost my favorite purchase on Katarina because you have Ingenious Hunter, of course. You can use it more often. And it's a very good active. And I have it slot as number one, by the way. Because it's... Uh, it's my favorite button to press for Zonya, and I have Gunblade on 3. I know, weird. Why do you have Gunblade on 3? Because Gunblade on 3 and Shampo on E, I can press them together really easily, like this. Like that. Like a claw. Just like this. But it's up to you. Keybinds don't matter. Um, everyone has their preference on that. Uh, but yeah, so your items will be Gunblade, Tier 2 Boots, one of them. Um, Oblivion Orb. Okay. That's... Not the full purchase, obviously. It's just Oblivion Orb. So you still have two items. Gunblade and Tier 2 Boots. Completed. Uh, Zonia, Void, Rabadon. That's five items. And then you're going to go back to Oblivion Orb. And then you're going to pretty much finish it as your last item. If you want to finish it as your last item. Uh, but I really think it's not worth upgrading this early on when you buy it. Just because I really feel like there are better items on Katarina. Like Zonia, Void are so good to have on Katarina. It's almost always worth buying Zonia, Void or, uh, you know, Rabadon, Void or something like that and compared to a full Morello purchase. I, I just see it that way. Um, because these items are way too good on Katarina and they're a thousand times more efficient uh, over Morello. Buy Morello late game is the best choice. Or you can sell Oblivion Orb. Here's what, what you can do also. You can sell Oblivion Orb and buy a Leandri's Torment. That's also doable. Banshee, I never buy it. I'm just gonna say this. I never buy this. It's okay. Yeah, it might be helpful in some cases if it's really difficult, like... But you have Mark Treads. You want the Tenacity and you have a little bit of MR. I don't want to invest too much into like defensive stuff. Like It's always wrong to buy a Zonya and a Banshee together. If you're against mages and stuff, just buy a Zonya. If, if you want something defensive, buy a Zonya. Yeah, it gives MR, but you're active. Your active stops them from killing you, right? You have the active, and I think Zonya is better than Banshee on Katarina, to be in all honesty. I never buy Banshee. I just have it there 
as like a rare circumstance. I have it on item choices. Hexdrinker early game is good if it's really, really rough. Again, I just buy Merc Treads for the MR. Yes, this, you know, has 35 MR. Merc Treads has 25 MR. But I already have Magic Resistance in my runes. And the runes of Magic Resistance have been buffed. So, you get extra MR. So, I think generally, I wouldn't go Hexdrinker as often. It's still good though. But only in the early game. Don't buy this late game. Like, you're gonna buy like long sword, uh, first item, and then you feel like you need hex drinker. Just buy it. Okay, just buy hex drinker and then finish complete. That you can do that. You can do that if you wish. But again, I advise against it. Rylai isn't that great. It's okay because it has a lot of AP, 90 AP, right? But it's not amazing. I would honestly. In some matchups where they're full tanks and it's really hard, you know, you, some people gonna have those games. You're gonna have games where they're ultra tanky, they have so much health, they have so much shit, like, it's so hard to kill anyone. You can't hit their backline, it's so difficult. Here's what you do. Rylai, Leandri, buy them together. Sadly, if you're forced to buy Rylai and Leandri in a game, you've kinda like, it's it's a bad game, alright? It's a bad game, because as Katarina, you wanna be bursting people. You don't wanna sit there and press R and lower their health for your team to kill them. But sometimes you have to do that, and you have to understand that sometimes you, you have to play that role of just DPS and not bursting. So Rylai and Leandri together is really good, because as you slow them, Leandri, what does it do? right impaired movement um, you do burn damage uh, it's increased against movement impaired units so if they're slowed from Rylai the is gonna take effect on that so you're gonna buy these two plus probably a Rabadon eventually and a Void in that situation I probably wouldn't buy Zonya because you need Rabadon and Void honestly like you'd have in this situation against tanks you have Gunblade tier 2 boots uh, Rabadon Void Rylai Leandri that's six items against tanks, right? Against heavy CC, heavy tanks, you're gonna buy these six items together and you're gonna play that role of go in, dual DPS, and that's it. You're gonna shampoo out. Your team has to clean up. Sometimes if they're full tanks like that, you're gonna have to play that way. You have no choice. Lich Bane, ugh, just forget it, all right? This item makes me vomit. It's almost not worth going for on Katarina unless you're looking for a clean, awesome end game finish at the Nexus or something and It'll be clean, and everyone's gonna clap, and it's gonna be exciting, right? It's gonna be fantastic. Uh, you can make, put it on Katarina Mains Reddit, it'll get a thousand upvotes. It's great, that, that'd be great, but it's almost never worth it. Uh, QSS, QSS is good, yes, against Malzahar ulti, but even against Malzahar, I don't care. I just wreck him, honestly, with longsword start, and I play aggressive against him, and I, I don't want to invest into this. But you can, it's not a bad item. I just personally don't do it because I'm a very aggressive player and I just go Gunblade and all in. Like Gunblade's such a core item that I kind of don't want to miss it out. You can buy Gunblade, tier two boots, and then QSS. Don't buy QSS first item. You want to buy Gunblade as fast as you can and then buy QSS later. If you really feel like you need it, just, just buy it. This is actually effective in the higher elos as well. And of course, eventually you're gonna buy Elixir of Sorcery, and yeah, that's pretty much it. One thing I suggest you do, by the way, is keybind something like this. If you press this, this shows up, and then you can set a keybind to whatever you want, so it just automatically puts it in that slot, so you don't have to later uh, drag it or whatever. It's just it makes things a bit cleaner, it makes it a bit simpler, and I, I like that personally. That's why I have item set. Um, but yeah, uh, that is pretty much it for items and the runes. Uh, by the way, that's my, my that's not my elo. I just want to let you guys know that's not my elo. I'm in placements. All right, I'm in placements. I'm in placements. I've only played a few games. Um, we reached platinum three. Okay, so this is wrong, guys. I'm not gold two. All right, I'm not gold two. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, this little video. I hope this helped out. Uh, for patch not not nine point two, and uh, I wish you best of luck. Have a fantastic season. Uh, it's going to be exciting. It's going to be thrillful. And I can't wait uh, to be able to hit Diamond, hopefully, uh, this year. Because um, last year, we hit Platinum 3. That was our peak. Um, Platinum 3 was our peak. And we want to push forward to that. We want to get Diamond, right? Hopefully, we'll see how things go. Um, other than that, thank you guys so much for watching. And I will see you on the Rift. Peace out.